Okay, good day, guys. This is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College's Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is EET 121 Digital 1. Today, we're going to discuss one of our other basic logic functions in a little bit more detail, and that's the OR gate. The OR gate is often considered logical addition. We're going to go into that. Okay, so OR gate, if we remember right, looks like this little seashelly looking thing. It's got a number of inputs, A and B, coming in. In this case, it's two inputs and a single output. Um, you can also be expressed in the box form, where there's a symbol in here, greater than or equal to 1. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, greater than or equal to 1 is equal to x. This is the same representation of a more commonly used symbol right there. But be aware that this one exists. OK, so we remember. Given our truth table of all possible occurrences of A and B, and we know that the expression OR is equivalent to X is high when any input is high. So 0 and 0, nothing's high, so it's a 0. 0 and 1, B is high, so we get a high. 1 and 0, one of the inputs is high, so we get a 1. And now A and B, they're both high. That also satisfies our, our uh, expression. It's high anytime an input is high. There you go. OK, so that is how an OR gate works. So let's talk about pulsed operation. Given these pulses right here coming into this OR gate, what can we expect the output x to look like? Well, at time this window right here, it looks like B is low, but A is high. So we've got a high signal right there. Now they're both high. Now only A is high, so we're still there. But now B is high, A is low. Now they're both high. Now this is the first time that we get down to a low, because they're both simultaneously zero. Now we're back up to a high. So signal X would look like this. Now let's do kind of something like the book does, where we invert one of the signals. Let's just do the inversion of B, which looks like this. And that's not B. Well, how does X behave? And there you have a slightly different waveform, because A or not B will produce this following results. Okay. So let's talk about the Boolean expression of these guys. OK, so Boolean expression, the logic expression is, again, we can, uh, let's draw our schematic, A, B, where signal X is equal to A or B. It can be drawn in the following fashion, A or B is equal to X. OK, this is very important. This is not regular addition. This is Boolean addition. There is no carry in Boolean addition, because we know in regular binary addition, 1 plus 1 is equal to 0 with a carry of 1. So the answer, 1 plus 1 in binary is 1, 0. There is no carry in, uh, in Boolean addition. So let's just draw there. So 0 or 0 is 0. 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 0 is 1, 1 or 1 is 1. Again, there's no carry on that. Okay, so that is how it can be expressed. Given a gate A, B, or C, it's a 3 input OR, its output will be high anytime any one of these is high. So A or B or C is equal to x. OK? OK, an application example of this would be, uh, let's just uh, use a simple example. You're in a processing manufacturing environment, and you want to know anytime a certain machine is available for work. And let's say you've got three identical machines, machine A, machine B, and machine C. And 
here's a an operator, uh, excuse me, here's a panel right here, basically a display where, let's see. Got an LED right there. And what happens is when a machine is available to work, it's going to send out a signal on any one of these lines here. A, let's say he's available to work. All of a sudden, oops, let me go ahead and use blue on that one. He's available to work. A pulse comes out here. And B is not. And C is not. What's happening here is this expression A or B or C is equal to X. So 1 or 0 or 0 is equal to 1. Basically, we get a 5-volt signal here. And again, it's going to ground across this resistor here. The potential difference. Current's going to start flowing, and this LED is going to blink. It's going to say, hey, one of the machines avail is available to work. Doesn't matter which one. Go inside this room and start working with it. So now what happens if C suddenly finishes what its task, what it was doing, that suddenly it becomes available? Well, that, that LED is still going to blink because it's 1 or 0 or 1 is equal to 1. So it's also telling the workers, OK, let's go ahead. Let's go into that, into, that, uh, into that room. There's one or more machines available. Now, all of a sudden, A and B, they're both broken down. And so is C. What's going to happen? So 0 or 0 or 0 is equal to 0. This is not 5 volt output. It's 0, and there is no potential difference across that resistor and LED, and the LED stops lighting. OK? So let us move on to the NAND gate, a, something that you guys have been pretty familiar with in lab.